We start with vector search. So vector search has been here for a while, but now it's generally available. So when should you use vector search? Vector search is really useful when you have to uh, basically process unstructured data. So for example, text such as PDFs or images, and you want to do similarity search of, of uh, like this unstructured uh, data. For this, you need a vector index, and we have that now in Databricks. Yeah, so that's very uh, exciting. So what is, uh, how is it used basically? Often it's used in RAGs or retrieval augmented generation. I'm sure you've already heard about RAG quite a lot. It's been a bit of a buzzword in the past, uh, you know, like year. So the way that it would work in Databricks is that you have your source delta table that has all the unstructured uh, data. And then what you do is that you take this text, for example, and you're going to convert it to a mathematical representation, so to a vector representation using what we call an embedding model. And so when you have your vector embeddings, they're going to be stored in this particular ve vector database that's like very good at you know dealing with vector embeddings. And actually, one of the new things that uh, that is now GA is that after you've computed your embeddings, now you can save them to like a separate table so that you can reuse them afterwards. So instead of recalculating the embeddings every time, you just throw yes. them somewhere and then you say to the vector store, just use these already embedded exactly. documents. Okay. Yeah, so that's very nice. And so here you've used the embedding model to store your source table. And what happens is that when you have a query, so let's imagine that we take this databricks.com like documentation, a lot of unstructured sections and we chunk it and we put it in a vector database. And then you have a question coming in, for example, what is Delta Live Tables? Um, and so what you're going to do, you're going to take that query, you're going to transform it into a vector embedding as well. And then you're going to like look at the distance between, you know, this query and all the vector embeddings that are stored in the vector database. And so this is going to return like all the documents that are most relevant to answer this query. You provide all those rec relevant documents as context to this particular query so that then an LLM can just take this query with the relevant documents in order to formulate a nice answer. And so that's one of the main, uh, let's say, use cases that you can uh, use uh, RAG uh, vector search for its RAG applications. So the vector search is mainly the retrieval mechanism before mm -hmm. any search you want to do on this unstructured data. Yeah. And of course, you can do filtering on top. But We're yeah. not going to get into details uh, today, but uh, yeah, there's a lot that you can do uh, with it. And it's very easy to use it uh, in Databricks because even just using the UI, here I have this main rag chatbot databricks documentation so you have this table which has like id url and then the content and from there you can just create a vector search index just here so i can just give it a name so like for example uh, lara test and then i get a primary key so id here then i need an endpoint because i need the vector index to live somewhere so i need to create that first as easy as going to the compute section, vector search, and then you create your endpoint from there. Here I can just reuse one that already exists. Let's use this one, for example. So I can use this one. Then you can compute your embeddings, but you can also ask Databricks to compute the embeddings yeah. for you. Or if you already have your own embeddings, you can just bring them and have uh, the vector index to use them. So is this the using ex uh, existing embedding column, the embedding tables we were discussing before. Uh, so if you already have a column with the embeddings in it, then you can use that particular uh, column. But Sounds I good. think in that case, you bring your embeddings. Okay. And so then you uh, choose the source uh, column, which is in this, con in this context is going to be this content um, column. 
And then you choose the embedding model. The embedding model is the model that will allow you to convert the raw text into a mathematical um, ma representation. So for example, here you can just use VG. Here, I think that's the, the thing that the thing. Yeah, yes. that's, that's just uh, writes it back to a table so that you can use it later. And then you choose your sync mode. Do you want it triggered or do you want it continuous? Triggered, I guess, if your data is static and it's not going to change often, it makes sense to choose triggered, right? Yes. If it's going to change every day, you can add continuous, but obviously then the costs are going to be higher. And then you can just create. And all those steps, you can also just do it here using the REST API. So what you can do here is just create your endpoint, endpoint name and the type. And then here you can just create a vector search index by adding a name, source table, the pipeline tab, triggered, primary key. And you can see here, we're just, it's just the exact same field that you have here. So you have a lot of different ways to, to do it. And then you can just retrieve like your, um, your vector search index. So it's pretty, it's pretty easy actually. Pretty to easy use. to start. Yeah. And just to mention, to mention here that every time you create your index, your index is associated with a specific embedding model. So the embedding model is associated with the index. So if you want to change the embedding model, you will have to rebuild your index at that point. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. You need to use the same embedding model for the two steps. Yes. That makes sense. And so. That's it. And then there are just a lot of benefits of like linked to using, I think, this vector uh, search uh, in Databricks. Like the first being, I think you need to have uh, change data feed enabled right on the Delta table so that then the updates are just, you know, on incremental data that's coming in. So just updates or appends. And so it's just the sync is done automatically, which is, which is really interesting. It's great that you can absurd and append stuff, right? So whatever is happening on your data table, you can do it to the index as well, instead of dropping it and recreating it from scratch. Yeah. And so that's uh, about it. And I think in the announcements uh, that were done today, also, I think I quite like they show all the added advantages mm. of using this vector search index. So in, in Databricks, so Obviously, the automated data ingestion, we just mentioned it, but also like the built-in governance is really what differentiates it from other like vector index because you use the whole governance framework exactly. that we have, which means like, I think we have role-based access controls for, for queries, if I'm not mistaken, and indexes. I think our calls are coming later this year for like role level and column, uh, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, but no. I think it's in the roadmap. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's in the roadmap. So the good thing is that we're trying to simplify the security model, right? And keep it common across any components of the platform. Vector search is one of them. So yeah, we try to stay consistent for simplicity. That's amazing. And so, yeah. Basically, it was in public preview for a while. There's just a few changes that came with GA. So the sync back to a, to a table, I'm not sure if they talk about it here. And then there were a lot of security features basically that were added with customer managed keys and, and private link, if I'm not mistaken. One thing that we should add also is that uh, we hear a lot from customers who want to use vector databases for some use cases where we should use like feature online uh, stores or like feature stores. Can you expand a bit about this? Yeah, so when it is mostly your data is structured and in a table tabular format, then you'd better release it as an online table and do a feature lookup. Where it's more unstructured and you want to perform this similarity search, right? Remember that in the similarity search, we have mapped all our data into this index, which is think of it as a clustering, right? In a different space. And we try to find the more similar documents to the question out of all of this space. And we return the best three of whatever, right? But in the feature lookup, you actually request an ID or the name of the That's user base precise, or right? so on a key, right? So, yeah, it's a key value. Yeah, it's a key value. A request. So, yeah. And for that, yeah, we have the, those online tables like feature store that we can use. And in your application, in your LLM application, you can have both working together, right? Yeah. So retrieve your documents from the vector store and retrieve some more structured values from your online tables.